Welcome to Music History Monday for December 12th, 2022. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is The Garden State Hall of Fame. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. December 12th is a crazy day in American jazz and popular music history, a day that saw the births of five, count them, five significant musicians, three of whom have something very special in common. Let us first recognize the birthdays of the two jazz-slash-pop musicians who do not share this special commonality. We start with a big happy birthday to the jazz singer Joe Williams, who was born on December 12, 1918, 104 years ago today. Born Joseph Goreed, he came into this world in Cordell, Georgia, and left it on March 29, 1999, in Las Vegas at the age of 80. Big Joe had a gorgeous, warm, baritone voice that was as smooth as a peeled onion. Long associated with Count Basie, 1904 to 1984, and Basie's big band, Williams sings one of his trademark songs, All Right, OK, You Win, with the Basie band in the Link Attached, recorded circa 1970. Another big happy birthday to the singer, drummer, and percussionist, Sheila E., E for Escovito, who was born right here in Oakland, California on December 12, 1957, 65 years ago today. Sheila Escovito came by her musical bona fides honestly. Her father is the Latin jazz percussionist Peter, or Pete Escovito, born in 1935, in the San Francisco Bay Area city of Pittsburgh, California, and her godfather was the great American Latin, Afro-Cuban, and mambo musician, songwriter, bandleader, and record producer Tito Puente, 1923 to 2000. She is a singer of talent and a killer fine drummer. The link attached dates to 1987, with Sheila E. playing a knockout drum solo with her frequent collaborator, Prince. And now, three more birthday babies, all with something special in common beyond the shared date of their births. And that is their roots, or ruts, as it might be locally pronounced, in the great Garden State of New Jersey. In reverse chronology, starting with the most recent birth, We begin by wishing a killer happy birthday to the magnificent Dionne Warwick, born Warwick, who came into this world on December 12, 1940, 82 years ago today, in the burg of East Orange in Essex County in northern New Jersey, just northwest of Newark. Maestra Warwick is the second most charted female vocalist during the so-called rock era, 1955 to 1999, second only to Aretha Franklin, selling more than 100 million records worldwide. Among the trophies in her living room are six Grammy Awards. Trained at the Hart School of Music at the University of Hartford, Connecticut, there was nothing Warwick could not sing. Gospel, soul, rhythm and blues, pop, rock, and jazz. Warwick had a particularly close working relationship with the songwriters Burt Bachrach, composer, born 1928, and Hal David, lyricist, 1921 to 2012. The list of songs they made famous together is just astonishing. 39 consecutive chart hits, including Walk On By, I Say A Little Prayer, Trains and Boats and Planes, Do you know the way to San Jose? Reach out for me. The windows of the world. You'll never get to heaven. Alfie. Promises, promises. 
I'll never fall in love again, and raindrops keep falling on my head. Wow. Just wow. The attached link comes from the Glen Campbell Music Show, circa 1982. It features a medley of Burt Bacharach songs as performed by Bacharach on the piano, Dionne Warwick, and Glenn Campbell, 1936 to 2017. More birthday wishes to another Jersey girl. On December 12, 1937, 85 years ago today, the singer and actress Connie Francis, born Conchetta Rosa Maria Franconero, came into this world in Newark, New Jersey. She was the top charting female vocalist of the late 1950s and early 1960s, the first woman in history to reach number one on Billboard's Hot 100 chart. And that was in 1960. OMG, how the young New Jersey raised me had a thing for Connie Francis. She was sultry and beautiful, a New Jersey Italian princess. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I long for her to this day, though that would be the 1960s edition of Ms. Francis. In the link attached, Francis performs her signature song, Where the Boys Are, on The Ed Sullivan Show on June 23, 1963. Finally, we come to today's ultimate New Jersey birthday baby, the man who put Hoboken, New Jersey on the international map, the singular Francis Albert Frank Sinatra, who was born on December 12, 1915, 107 years ago today in an upstairs tenement at 415 Monroe Street there in Hoboken. He died in Los Angeles on May 14, 1998, at the age of 82. Frank Sinatra. Growing up when and where and in the house that I did in South Jersey in the 1950s and 1960s, Frank Sinatra was a god, a family deity. What Joan Sutherland was for my father, so Francis Albert Sinatra was for my stepmother. She had been born in 1928 and passed away in 2010. For her, Sinatra was her youth reactivated, her cultural bedrock, her existential heartthrob, and she was not alone, oh no. Frank Sinatra was inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame, right, who knew, in 2008, in its inaugural year. That initial class was pretty impressive. More on that in a bit. Here is the statement from the New Jersey Hall of Fame website honoring the chairman of the board, his very self. Quote, Born in Hoboken in 1915, Francis Albert Sinatra became one of New Jersey's best-known celebrities, singing on radio, records, film, television, and concert stages the world over. Old blue eyes brought style, sophistication, and unprecedented attention to the finest standards in the great American songbook. And it all began with a four-cent ferry ride from New Jersey to New York City. Sinatra is considered by many as the finest male popular song vocalist of all time, but his list of accomplishments goes well beyond that. An entertainer for six decades, Sinatra's achievements earned him three Oscars, two Golden Globes, 10 personal Grammys, and a total of 21, including those for his albums, an Emmy, a Cecil B. DeMille Award, a Peabody, and he was recognized as a Kennedy Center honoree in 1983. These are only a sampling of the awards and honors that suggest the prominence of this New Jersey native son achieved in music, film, television, and business. A generous charitable contributor, he was the recipient of the prestigious Jean Herschelt Humanitarian Award by the Motion Picture Society of America in 1971. The Hoboken Post Office was renamed in his honor in 2002. He was and remains the single most influential vocalist in the history of American popular music." Unquote. 
It's a lovely statement. However, I must inform you that I had to edit the statement because the original version on the New Jersey Hall of Fame website contained, as best as I could tell, 10 typos. Can you find more typos than I did? That original statement is linked, should you choose to try. I suppose we should all be grateful that the website statement celebrating Sinatra does not contain such charming New Jersey colloquialisms as D's, meaning these, dem, meaning them, or those, meaning those, or such phrases as, you understand what I'm saying, or do you's got a problem with that, or get out of here, or any appearance of the exclamation, yo. For the record, Dionne Warwick was inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame in 2013, and Connie Francis in 2016. The New Jersey Hall of Fame selection process. Based on an examination of the inductees, we could conclude that to qualify as a, quote, deserving New Jerseyan, unquote, one must either have been born in the state, grown up in the state, or spent a substantial portion of one's professional life in the state. The actual selection process seems pretty straightforward. We quote the website. One, anyone can recommend deserving New Jerseyans at any time, year-round. Public recommendations will be taken into consideration by the selection committee when determining the top 100 nominees. Two, the selection committee determines a list of 100 potential nominees by March 10th. Three, the New Jersey Hall of Fame Academy narrows the master list down to 50 on or about April 1st. Four, the public is invited to vote on the final nominations from April 18th to May 18th. Five, the individual receiving the most votes in each category is inducted following approval of the board. Six, the board will then deliberate to determine who else should be inducted for that given year. Seven, voting closes and inductees are announced on or before June 30th. And finally, item eight, honorees will formally be inducted in a red carpet ceremony in October. Unquote. As criteria go, so far, so good. But from here, things get, well, curious, as the following stipulations would seem to indicate that some honorees don't actually want to be in the New Jersey Hall of Fame. Quote, Note, official induction into the New Jersey Hall of Fame is contingent upon the honoree formally accepting the honor at the red carpet induction ceremony within three years of the original induction, unquote. Three years? Who in heaven's name waits three years to accept an honor? Unless, of course, they don't believe it to be an honor. The criteria continue, quote, in the case of a deceased nominee, a representative would be required to attend in their place. As of 2017, inductees must formally accept their honor in order to be included in the permanent New Jersey Hall of Fame Museum, unquote. Again, again, why is this necessary? As of 2017, who, pray tell, did not formally accept their honor? Finally, quote, the board reserves the right to remove an inductee who it no longer deems worthy of the honor, unquote. Huh? How is someone deemed no longer worthy of an honor that was given in honor of previous accomplishments? If someone was worthy in the first place, what would suddenly make them unworthy? What could possibly get someone kicked out of the New Jersey Hall of Fame? Perhaps, oh, the discovery that Joyce Carol Oates, class of 2012, uses a ghostwriter? The revelation that Danny DeVito, 
class of 2010, is actually six foot two? The realization that Alexander Hamilton, class of 2021, had almost nothing to do with New Jersey beyond marching through it during his Revolutionary Wartime service and having been killed in a duel with Aaron Burr on the Weehawken dueling grounds across the Hudson River from Manhattan? Can someone please explain this removal proviso to me? Back, finally, to the inaugural class of 2008, of which Frank Sinatra was a most deserving member. The group inducted that year might properly be called the class of no-brainers. That's because New Jersey was formally named on June 24, 1664, and thus in 2008, the selection committee had 344 years of New Jersey history to choose from. That inaugural group consisted of Buzz Aldrin, Clara Barton, Yogi Berra, Bill Bradley, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Malcolm Forbes, Robert Wood Johnson II, chairman of the board of Johnson & Johnson from 1938 to 1963, Vince Lombardi, Tony Morrison, General Norman Schwarzkopf, Frank Sinatra, Bruce Springsteen, Meryl Streep, and Harriet Tubman whose Underground Railroad was headquartered in Cape May, New Jersey. It's a nice list. Hey, does any of you guys got a problem with these people? We perchance think not. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.